you follow the crucifix. Okay, yeah, thank you. So he, watch, you will see what they do. Blessings, dear friends. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to be doing our procession from the outside. You'll be coming in. Thank you for tuning in. And it's a gift to pray with you today. Stand behind or in front? Uh, the crucifix. Again, pull it up straight. As, far, as straight as you can. Because there's a camera here and there's a uh, holder. So I would invite you to step up to this. Step up there. There we go. And then you want to go straight. And straight and straight as you can. One. Appreciate it. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. So find the find the crucifix and stand next to the crucifix on either side. You, I will be walking. Good to pray with you, dear friends. Good to see you.
holy city of Jerusalem, triumph that was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their gut and branches. And the love for the human race who sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature, and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility, mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering, and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends, to the world.
Paul's letter to the Philippians, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to, to the glory of God and the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but 
well know that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. Then the people, as a whole, answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. I invite you to stand as you are able, dear friends. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by crossing lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. They, those who passed by, derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also along with the scribes and elders were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, but God deliver him now if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way from noon on. Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and then about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, the mass of Akhtani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah, and once one of them ran and get the sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, but the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last at that moment. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised after his resurrection. They came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified. And they said, Truly, this man was God's son. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends. Please be seated. Beloved Palm Sunday, blessed Palm Sunday, thank you to those tuning in online. We gather in the sacred space. We pause. We become witness as we did stand together on Park Avenue in that wonderful sunshine. We too gather as witnesses in this complicated, complex, ambiguous Palm Sunday. This modest king, this king of love, this who my shepherd is, you and I, we held our branches, we hold our branches, we said together, Hosanna in the highest, and it's okay, Dad, don't worry, take a deep breath, drop your shoulders, I've got three kids, it's okay, it's 
good to see you. It's good to be with you. Because we lift up our branches in praise, yes, and then we move to Golgotha because we then lay our branches down at the feet of Jesus. We find our hope, we are inspired in the promise of our Lord's victory over brokenness, over sin. We journey, we watch this King of Love appearing before Pontius Pilate, even as he suffers false charges, betrayal, Jesus maintains his humility, his poise. He keeps silent, almost, almost committed to his heavenly duty. This face of suffering becomes the ray of hope for you, for me, because this is what I think illuminates the path to redemption for everyone who dares to, I think, follow in his footsteps. And the reason I think we listen and we recall this time of trial is that our, I think our own lives, my life, your life, our lives are marked by afflictions, by trials, by hardships, and these trials, oh, like a master potter shaping clay can shape, refine you, me, this church, our world, into vessels appropriate to the King's glory and service. Our lives, tangible, flexible, Change. I think that's crucial for any who wants to follow Jesus. And so this humble king, this Jesus nailed to the crucifixion, <laughs> enduring unfathomable anguish. And despite his darkest hour, can you imagine? And we hear this every year. And this is where I miss Luke, because Dr. Luke offers just this wonderful word. Imagine the greatest pain ever endured. Ever endured. And in that moment of the greatest pain, we hear, Father, forgive. Oh. oh. What a forgive them for they don't know this selfless act. Reveals for me, for you, for anyone who's here for the first time, for anybody who's tuning in, for anybody who ever had a question about what is this other way love these ridiculous Christians keep talking about, this for there's no future without forgivenessness. This is where it is rooted. The sun setting on a stormy day, only to arise anew with the show of light and color. That's the holy week that we step into today. You, me, we, although facing dark times, this holy week shows us, I believe, that light will prevail over the darkness. How wonderful. The imagery, the richness in this reading, friends, the temple curtain splitting to the earth shattering event, dismantling, I wonder, my barriers between me and God, this immaterial being that lives outside and creates time and space and is the ultimate embodiment of love, this torn curtain. Offering perhaps a pathway for redemption for even me, for you, for us, allowing access to the divine. And then the earth shakes. 
I had the gift of growing up in Cape Town, so it has only been since I moved to this wonderful country that this earth shake experience is weird. I mean, I remember just sitting on the couch and just, that's weird. It's, it's, it's shocking. But without tectonic movement, without seismic forces remodeling, reforming the ground beneath our feet, this very planet, as we know, doesn't remain stable, doesn't grow anew, right? We need the tectonic forces, this natural movement of the earth. I wonder how these seismic forces remodel and reform. If the ground, what does that do with my spiritual life in Jesus? Love and grace transforming, or at least allowing the transformation of my heart. And as you heard me say, according to my research, the heart has 40 million neurons, the little mind. Oh, brave heart in mind. What a gift that we have an opportunity this holy week to embody the hopeful message on Sunday in our daily lives. How will you, how will I, how will we this Sunday, this Holy Week endeavor and dare to be instruments of peace and forgiveness in the world? But not only in the world. How will we, how will you, how will I dare to be the light of Christ in the darkest corners of my life, of the neighborhood, of the church? And as we journey through Holy Week, I think let us be inspired by this wonderful message of hope found in Matthew's Gospel. The story of Christ's passion, for me, is a witness to the transformational power of love and sacrifice from the triumphant entry to the crucifixion, to the tomb. And what I noticed at 8 o'clock, this was the first time I noticed this. And then I went straight to what's the place in Corona del Mar, the, the funeral. The, everybody's dying to get in there. <laughs> Pacific View, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was struck by the gospel because uh, having had the gift of, of laying many there to rest, the gospel says that after the quake, the saints were, were falling out of the tomb and walking around the neighborhood. <laughs> what, 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 what wonderful hope for me and you. Here, this holy week, those who you hold in your hearts, those saints that have shaped you, those ones that have been safety nets in your life, those saints whom you carry deep in you, deep in you, to think that one day they will fall out of the tomb. Together, this week may we continue on this Lenten journey in the simplicity of our holy life, scripture, a divine meal, prayers, songs, and we, we, we hold in each other's hand as we go through this holy week and we dare to say to my neighbor, you are not alone. I invite you to stand as you are able, dear friend.
On this day, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Boldly be each other in peace. Up to this world. Good morning. I just want to let you know that today we are closing our Lenten program for Casa Teresa. We will take all of your wonderful donations to the facility tomorrow afternoon. And thank you so very much for your kindness, love, and generosity. You've made a real difference in the lives of many people. Thank you so much for that. And one other um, quick announcement. Uh, Jim and I spent some time with Larry yesterday, and he's in a lot of pain. So please, would you continue to pray for him? And maybe if you wanted to send a card, if everybody here sent a card, I think that would really lift him up a lot. Thank you. Thank you. It's Julian Hammenberg. <laughs> Episcopal Church Women. Yes, good morning. I'm Juliana. I'm a member of uh, ECW, which stands for Episcopal Church Women. So um, I don't know if you know much about ECW, but we support the church through worship, service, gifts, and fellowship. 
as well as doing a lot of fundraising. And I just want to let you know we're having an exciting year. We're going to have line dancing, we're going to have our concerts, we're going to have wine tasting, so stay tuned. It's in your uh, bulletin at the moment about the upcoming, uh, upcoming uh, events that we're going to have. Also, I wanted to invite all the women of the parish to uh, maybe attend our next meeting, which is uh, not this Tuesday, the Tuesday after. I have invitations. I'll, I'm going to be at coffee hour, and I'd love to speak with you. I have a flyer to explain what ECW does, um, but I would love you to come and get to know your uh, fellow parishioners. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, next week is Easter, and that means that St. Mary's will be holding its traditional uh, Easter brunch after the 10 o'clock service. We'll be out on the terrace. Um, we will have mimosas, and we're inviting everyone to bring um, a potluck dish. There's a sign up in the narthex on the table, so please feel free to sign up there. If you don't, you can still bring something yummy, a side dish, entree, dessert, bread, whatever you, the spirit moves you to bring. So I hope to see you all there. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you. And this week, I will offer a reflection as to the theological and historical connection of the Easter Bunny to Easter. I'm hearing so many interesting comments out there, and I get cranky when there's intellectual laziness occurring. And so I will offer insight to Usner, uh, deep history in Germany, with Viking language and how Christians there took that, which is already in their context, and then offered some prayers of the way the Christians do. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you that. So, uh, birthdays, anniversaries, Thanksgiving! Birthdays, anniversaries, Thanksgiving, going once, going once. Tomorrow is my 97.
going to cease the service and I invite you. I tell you, you have a dramatic piece to have. Whatever, I'm not even going to have to find something, but I will be with my church. He said, 10 a.m. Brunch. He said, Hunt. Adventures out there, and it is a gift to worship with you. I just want to say hi to a dear friend because we were obeying today. Our dear friend Karen, she's enjoying the gift of time. Uh, but it's a gift to pray with you, a gift to have taken the journey with you, and a gift to see. Yes. That's happening this week. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. It's so nice. Is that all? It's such a good one. <laughs> so good. And uh, morning Thursday, we will have a wonderful guest feature, the Reverend Bill Chris. And I appreciate that Bill Chris will be the uh, celebrant on Easter Sunday so that I can bring that really bold fire to Not too fire, though. Ah, certainly. On Easter Day, we will have probably two doctors on Easter Sunday. That's what that is, is that the offering to the blessings of our life and our labor to the Lord.
Supper in thanksgiving for today's altar flowers given to the glory of God and when we may in gratitude for the recovery of her cousin Betty Kenningham from an especially bad bout of pneumonia for complication. We give thanks for recovery and thank God for all prayers received. Continue on page 15 of your leaf of your friend. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. See, it is right and aboard our hands. Thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, who Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who we'll forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. So we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love, yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family. And dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life on the night before he died for us. Our, Jesus, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks. To you he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. 
whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And work on my work. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into that everlasting heritage with your daughters and sons that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. In Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for our and glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, in the language of your heart, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Christ our Passover and sacrifice for us. Therefore let us keep the peace.